Hi, I'm Mike. And the project list continues today as we head back into bird territory as we tackle the peacock's prosthetic leg once again. It's Peacock Leg 2.0, today on the project list on our Wyoming Life. Welcome to our Wyoming Life. Each week we tackle projects from the board and try to whittle away at the tasks that need done around the ranch. From cleaning corrals to tractor maintenance, it's all up there. And while some projects can wait, others can't. And a few months ago, we started working on a project that we can't give up on, and that's Project Peacock. If this is your first time here, please subscribe and join us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Sometimes, escaping the ordinary is very true for us, as I never would imagine that we'd be working on a prosthetic leg for a peacock. But when we started down this road, we knew there was no turning back. And this is the continuation of that story. In the beginning, we had a peacock who lost his leg over the winter due to frostbite. Peacocks don't sit on the ground in the wintertime, and he didn't get frostbite from direct contact with the snow, but he did get it from roosting in the rafters of the shed. And with the high wind hitting him from just the wrong direction, his life would never be the same again. We took him into the shop and began what we thought would be a normal recovery. But through the magic of the internet, a Reddit user heard our story and created a 3D printed leg for him. We got it, we put it on, and soon he was up and moving again. But not without difficulties. The leg was heavy. He had trouble moving the hinge at his knee as the muscles of his leg had already begun to atrophy. And I think it was just uncomfortable for him. The angle of the foot was hard for him to deal with. And even though he did wear it, he got into the habit of flying with it on rather than walking. And when he flew, he crash landed. The extra weight and bulk must have been awkward, and after a few weeks of wearing the new leg, he managed to break it. We repaired it, and he broke it again, this time beyond repair. A new solution was in order, and while our original designer and 3D printer started to work on his own new plan, we started working on one as well. Building him a new leg without a knee and a rounded end instead of a foot for him to walk on. Sort of a peg leg system which might be more stable, lighter, and easier for him to use. Today, we get to take a few drawings on the board and turn them into reality, no matter how crazy it sounds. One of the best and hardest things about living on the ranch is the fact that all the animals that live here, from chickens to pigs to horses and cows and calves, all depend on us for one thing or another. Most of the time, it's food. But there's also protection from the weather, hygiene issues, and of course, medical needs. We firmly believe that if we can help, we owe that animal our time to do everything we can for it and try to help it. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But a win is a win. And with a win, you can bank that good feeling that you have made one of the animal's lives even better, or even saved it. Back to the peacock. Our goal today is to get him back up and walking evenly again. He can walk on his stump, but he uses his wing, putting it on the ground for balance, which can be troublesome in itself. In addition, with the added struggle of moving around, he tends to be lethargic, sitting and not doing anything for hours of the day. When he used to be one of the most mobile animals on the ranch, helping Aaron in the garden or me working in the shop. His new prosthetic leg is gonna be pretty simple. A PVC sleeve will be cut to attach to his leg. That sleeve will have a wooden dowel attached to it to act as a stump extension. And the entire contraption will be held on his leg with Velcro straps. We start with our PVC. We have two kinds on hand. One is thick walled, the other is thin. We're gonna start with the thin for today's prototype because it's gonna be lighter for him to wear. Based on measurements from the broken leg, we'll cut it down to about a foot long, giving us a piece to work with that we'll be able to trim as we get closer to fitting it on him. The extra length will also save our fingers as we're gonna cut the PVC in half using a table saw. Then after cutting it, trimming it to a length of about four inches. It's time for our first test fitting of the day. I have a feeling the peacock is gonna be plenty annoyed with us as we move throughout this process. Each step along the way is going to need to be fitted to him and tested for fit and size. I'd be annoyed 
and I'm sure he will be. After we determine the length of the PVC is correct, we can break out our belt sander out of mothballs. And I don't think I've used this thing in a year or so. And sand down the edges and rounding off the corners in order to give him a more comfortable fit. Next up is an issue that we're going to have to deal with, and that's the peacock spur. This claw is used for fighting, and it needs somewhere to go in the new design. After marking the location on the PVC, we can drill a hole for it to fit through. This is actually good, as it'll keep the prosthetic leg from twisting as he moves. Back down the stairs we go, this time testing the placement of the hole for our spur, which seems to fit just right. Back upstairs, it's now time to start working on the dowel that's going to fit into the PVC brace. We need a pocket in the end of the dowel for his stump to fit into and keep it from sliding out of his new leg. To do this, we're first going to mark the center. Then, using a spade bit on a drill, we start taking material out of the middle of the dowel. Using a Dremel tool, we can sand it down and thin out the walls a bit where they need to be. Back down with the peacock, we test fit the dowel that will become his new stump extension. And with the fit about right, we can then add some felt to pad the inside of the cup that will hold his stump. In the fitting room, the pieces are reattached to the peacock and then marked for length. Can you see the annoyance in his eyes? I sure can. And I'm sure it's going to get worse before it gets better, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's now time to attach wood to plastic by drilling through both of them and securing it with a bolt. Measuring time again, and now it's time to get the length for the wooden piece so that he walks straight and level. Cutting it off, and then sanding it into a rounded dome shape for him. Velcro straps are then attached as we lay some padding to the inside of the PVC to keep it from wearing on his leg. This padding is made up of a few layers of vet wrap, the stuff you see wrapped around the legs of horses to treat sprains and injuries, but this stuff has tons of uses. And now they can add padding for Peacock's prosthetic legs to their label. We lay it in, cut it to size, and then it's back downstairs for another fitting on the Peacock. We attach the leg and cut the Velcro straps to length, and then it's time for him to try it out. It does seem like it's just a little bit too long, but that's an easy fix. Better to be too long than too short, so to speak. And we head back upstairs where we cut off some more of the length, rounding it off again, using the belt sander. Now, the final fitting. Setting the peacock down and strapping it on him. And away he goes. He's like a dog with shoes on. <laughs> This is obviously something we've ne never done before, and we're winging it, so to speak. The design keeps getting tweaked, and already we have some ideas how to attach it better and make it more comfortable for Mr. Cassidy. But I think we're going down the right road. I'm sure so to some people, they've thought, why bother? And that's okay, because for us, we look back on all the years of enjoyment this peacock has given us yelling at intruders, trying to help calves the way he seems to be watching everything we do. And we consider it payback. He deserves to be able to go outside and stroll around his old stomping ground, and we owe it to him, even if he walks like a dog wearing shoes. Thanks for coming along today. We're one step closer to the peacock being turned loose to do his thing. And as soon as it stops snowing and we can trust him not to fall on his face in the ice and the snow, we're going to do just that, and I hope you're there to help us celebrate his recovery. Find us on Facebook to stay up to date with what's going on with Cassidy the Peacock, and if you head to our website, you can sign up for the Herd Report and get weekly updates on all things ranch-related, including bloopers and behind-the-scenes footage. Those links are down in the description. Erin's going to be back to planting this week as she prepares to move into the high tunnel with spring gardening now underway. And of course, look for our regular ranch video on Sunday morning. Thanks for exploring the ranch life with us, and we invite you to escape the ordinary every chance you get by subscribing and coming along with us on this incredible and sometimes crazy journey. Until next time, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our 
Wyoming Life.